Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to My Free Life. I want to start off by apologizing for not posting any content in the last couple months. I've had some things going on in my life that was kind of consuming all my time, as I'm sure most of you have as well. But thank you for being here and I'm happy to be back. So with this build I want to try something a little bit different. I want to combine my two favorite things to do, which is camp or be in the water. So I decided I'm going to design a teardrop slash square drop overland off-road camper that doubles as a boat. Yes, an amphibious camper, but I don't want it to look like a boat at all. From the campsite, I want it to just look like a regular teardrop camper. So with that being said, it poses some challenges because I'm not going to have much freeboard in this build because I don't want sides of the boat coming up into that camper to where it looks like a boat. So I decided to design uh, a combination of a flat bottom with double pontoons on either side. And it's going to be a traditional size teardrop, just over four foot wide by just over eight foot long, four foot tall. Um, the shell itself, it'll set higher than that on the trailer, of course. Um, but, uh, like I said, I don't want it to look like a boat. So, I'm also going to design a four point outrigger system that attaches and detaches uh, once I get to... Uh, building the shell, I'll build the outriggers that'll go on each corner that'll extend an additional three foot out on either side add an extra six foot of width for stability and camping in the water um, but with that being said we are we are definitely going to uh, try to push the limits with this and have fun with it uh, thank you for joining me and by the way this footage on the first part of this build I had tons and tons of footage and I kind of got overwhelmed just jumping back into making my content again so what I did is it was way too long so I just put it on like quadruple speed or more I don't know it's fast and I just shut the volume out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to narrate over that for you that way um, you're not sitting through that long of a video now the other videos uh, will be shortened down and not narrated on they'll be uh, actually talked on but for this first one uh, we're gonna call this boat the berserker is gonna be the name of it and uh, this first part is going to be building the base so without further ado let's get to it and just to give everybody a sneak peek this is where I'm at as of today which is the day before I release this video part one this is how far I've got on the camper so far let me throw some slides in there for you you enjoy it okay so what we got going on right here is I started off with taking two 10 foot uh, schedule 40 4 inch in diameter PVC pipes I only need them 8 foot but they don't sell them in 8 foot so about two 10 footers cut them down to 8 foot what I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna take that along with four 1 by 10 by 8 foot common wood boards that I'm going to create my exterior pontoon shapes with that I'm going to uh, bolt the uh, PVC into the uh, wood screw and glue the wood in together so I can start getting my base set together for this build so after that's accomplished next I need to create my approach angles so what I did is I went one foot back on the bottom of one of the 1 by 10 common woods and went 0 to 1 to create my approach angle. Once I got this accomplished, I built the other side of the pontoon so I have two matching sides and then we're going to get it set up and get it ready to start squaring it off um, with some two by twos so we can start building out the framework. After getting the bottom and the top of the boat squared off with two by twos, I removed the boat from the temporary trailer I'm building this to rest on. Next, I mark out all my attachment points for all of my 2x2 floor braces, which the bottom sheathing and the top decking will be mounted to. After getting that accomplished, I cut and installed 45 degree supports for each of the 2x2s. Then I flipped the boat over to skin the bottom. Now the bottom has been skinned and the brace has been put in, I need to cut off the tips of all the protruding screws. 
Next, I need to install 2x2 floor joists to run the entire length of the boat. Aside of it adding structural integrity, um, it's going to allow for a solid distribution of force for the transom mounted small motor to push against. Now with that completed, um, I will have 18 one and a half inch thick cavities below the deck between the skin on the bottom um, where I will be filling with um, two-part expandable marine foam to add strength as well as buoyancy. Now there will also be eight additional cavities on, on the sides for any side. I flipped the boat over to run my chalk line for my center. That way I can uh, screw and glue the center braces that I've put in along the bottom of that boat. Now I'm ready to work on the second stage of my pontoon builds. So I will now be installing two eight foot long schedule 40 two inch PVC pipes on the inner wall of the flat bottom and bolt them together. This will allow me to create the shape that I want to create easily over the two inch across the four inch to give me that angle that I'm looking for for the outer pontoons. After getting all that bolted in and ready to go, it's time to start shaping my pontoons. So, what I did for this is I used a roll of hard plastic. What I did with this hard plastic is I used it to shape around the PVC pipes. So I cut off sections of this plastic to run down the pontoons just using screws to hold into place uh, after running the plastic all the way down it creates the shape that I want around the pontoons. Now of course that's uh, still loose, it's a looser shape, but then I used expandable can foam to spray inside of those voids to expand, harden up, and create that ultimate shape that I wanted for the pontoons. So what I did is I drilled holes down the side of the plastic after getting it installed use the great stuff expandable foam now this isn't necessarily buoyancy foam now all foam is going to float but that's not the purpose of this the purpose of this is to create the shape of my outer pontoons so I use the the uh, great stuff expandable foam for that and it worked out amazing so I drilled holes in for the tube to go into spray that let that fill up let that expand harden up created the shape perfectly um, for those pontoons and then uh, I took 40 grit sandpaper and roughed up all those pontoons, all, all, all the uh, plastic that I had added onto those pontoons and then cleaned that off really good and used acetone to make sure that whenever I do my PMF, which is poor man's fiberglass, when I do my PMF around it, it has something secure and strong to bond to. Now it's time to clean off the cured expanded foam and cut out my approach angles in the pontoons. My sawzall blade was not long enough, so I jumped to my old handy dandy chainsaw. Obviously folks, I do not recommend this method. It's clearly not OSHA approved. Now, I'm gonna make some uh, construction paper plugs to install in the tips of each pontoon. This is to allow me to fill in just the tips with expanded foam. The reason for this is because I will be using actual marine foam to fill out the pontoons with. Now I need to shape the tips with more plastic so that I can fill it in. After I complete that on both sides, I drill out all the fill holes and spray in the expanded foam to create the shapes of the pontoon like I did on the other side for it to expand and create that, that uh, shape I'm looking for for those pontoons and then uh, for the tips. And after that, uh, I let that cure up for 24 hours and start to prepare uh, the pontoons in the bottom of the boat getting ready to do the PMFing or poor men's fiberglass 
um, which is consisting of type on two and canvas. Now, this is how they used to make boats and planes back in the day, so it's tried and true. All right, well, let's get this going. Now I want to run a router around the base of the boat. I'm doing this so that the canvas can roll over the edge smoothly. After I accomplish that, I clean off the surface area and I apply a PMF test strip around the base of the boat and over the 40 grit roughed up pontoons to ensure that the bond will work for this application before I proceed on any further. I let that cure for 24 hours and turns out it worked out great. So I continued on. The next thing I needed to do was finish out capping uh, the, the bottom skin on the bottom of the boat so that uh, it'd be ready to PMF and of course everything is, is screwed and glued and now it's ready for us to apply some PMF to. Now before I can lay my PMF on this base I need to create my shape over the nose of this boat. So I head back to the old plastic roll, measure out and cut what I need to create a nice rounded nose. Now I make sure to take my time and I freehand this shape. I get it attached down with uh, using screws like uh, usual and uh, once I decided that uh, I'm happy with the shape, I uh, once again drill out my fill holes and insert the expandable foam. Now, while I'm not letting all that cure, I decided to go ahead and start applying my PMF over the rest of the bottom of the boat. It's pretty self-explanatory over the next few minutes, so I'm gonna cut out of here and just let it play out, and I'll jump back in when I uh, feel it's time to start explaining it to you again. So the main thing here when you're doing the PMF is you wanna make sure that you get it completely saturated with your tight bond two glue and spread very evenly. Right here I'm just shaping out the foam um, on the sides of the corners in the front so I'll have that nice angle back um, as I work it before I PMF over that. Just kind of going back and forth between uh, the nose and then PMF. And so do not be shy with your glue. Use lots of it and get it spread out thoroughly over the whole thing and I just use a little uh, rubber scraper um, spreader to uh, get the glue nice and thick on there so just keep working it, keep working it um, and as you can see I did one little foot section foot and a half section first and let that dry that way I could roll that canvas back and then uh, start the other side so as you uh, spread that canvas over you can keep it pulled real taut because it'll already be glued down on one side and make sure that you're spreading all the, the uh, wrinkles and everything out of there as you're going across because you want it to be completely glued down and completely smooth. And then of course, even after you know you get the whole bottom done, then of course you'll, you'll do the same thing on the top side of the canvas as well. But right now I'm just working on getting it all spread out I'm not going on the nose yet because I want to make sure because it's going to curve up. So I want to make sure I get all the flat done first and stretched across so that then whenever I go to work the nose, I can pull it in opposite angles um, as needed to make sure that uh, I get all the, the seams and wrinkles out of that. So now I'm just going to lightly pull this canvas over and get it kind of pre-positioned, get it kind of pulled taut all the way around it. and. Um, begin to start working uh, that canvas into the glue uh, a little bit at a time, pulling it taut as I need to to pull the wrinkles out, 
spreading it all the way across, making sure it's glued down nice and nice and tight. Um, and the sides, I just left a few inches to, over, to overlap to go over the sides because what I'm going to do on the sides there is I'm going to uh, pull that up and I'm going to do the pontoons to where the pontoons uh, canvas goes underneath that lip. That way when it's on the water, um, the overhang there will actually be going over the canvas on the bottom instead of the canvas on the bottom uh, pontoon coming over the side canvas where it'll be pushing against. This way um, it'll be glued over the bottom canvas. It is quite time consuming, but just put on some jams and you'll be good to go. So now that I've let that bottom all dry out, um, I'm doing the same thing to the top side of the canvas now. And again, don't be shy with the glue, use lots of it. Now I'm finishing roughing up the, that plastic on those pontoons with 40 grit sandpaper, get it nice and rough. And then getting it cleaned off, all of that good stuff. And now we're going to start gluing for the pontoons here. And I also ran a uh, cock seam down the uh, pontoon, it, down in the, in the crease where the pontoon meets the wood. Now even though I'm getting this all prepped up right here with the glue, I'm not going to pull that down yet until I come up over that with the uh, canvas on the sides. That way that top canvas pulls over. Now we're just going to keep working this glue and canvas down the sides. Start overlapping that, getting that spread out, tucked in real nice, and uh, like I said, douse it with a lot of glue, right? You want it completely saturated and covered. And you just gotta work it a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. Pull it top, pull it over, spread it, you know, just keep it going. So now I'm uh, going underneath it and getting it trimmed out and getting it prepared to uh, go over the top here. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna cut out the bubbles in the plastic where I screwed it down so I can smoothen that plastic down. And I've already roughed it up. And then start working the rest of the way around the top of that boat with the PMF and the Type Bond 2. Now while that glue is still wet on the top side, I'm making the bottom runners where I'm going to be uh, framing the camper from. So that's going to be where I'm going to start building out the framework for the camper on top of it. So I want to install that while it's still very wet. So now we've got that side pretty much ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and work on this end cap here, um, which will become the transom. Of course, I'll build it out from the inside to make it thicker and everything else as well. But right now I'm just gonna take uh, this one by 12 and screw it on the back so I can outline my shape. Then I will cut it out to fit. Now I'm just cutting out the shape, presetting all the screw holes. Got it set, ready to go, clamped on, make sure everything's where it needs to be. And of course I left that canvas overlapping so that whenever I pull it, it'll pull over that as well. So now I've got that screwed in, now I'm just trimming out. I'm gonna get the little end cap canvas pieces put on and then get ready to start PMF in the back end of this. And I use thumbtacks a lot. Uh, with the PMF, it, it just makes it so much easier when you can hold things in place with thumbtack. So, and 
now it's time uh, to wash, rinse, and repeat on the other side. As you can see, I've used thumbtacks to get that position. Same thing, left the overlapping canvas on that side of the boat so that I can do the pontoons underneath it and then pull that canvas over. So the water pressure is pushing up around the canvas rather against it. You see why I almost always wear a hat. Bald. Bald is beautiful. And I can't stress enough how important it is to use a lot of glue. So, and this, uh, for a gallon, it's about $19 at Lowe's for the Type On 2 for a gallon of it. So I went through several gallons so far on this build. Not as of this point, I think I'm only on my second gallon as of this point right here. So just work it, smoothen it, stretch it, cut it, shape it, work it, smoothen it, whatever you gotta do to make it work. Again, spread it, spread it down tight. Try to keep as many seams out of it as, as you can. And now that the other side's wrapped around, same thing, get that up. I've got my uh, brace pre-cut to put in on top over there, ready to go. So I can install it while it's still nice and wet. up around the nose now time for a break all right back to work so now that's all cured and dried I'm putting this is a thick primer uh, a real thick primer I'm primering the entire bottom of this out so that uh, it's got a smooth smoother finish for gliding across the water dog's ready to go. Now I need to put in some flooring just for the water test. In between that floor and the bottom sheathing, remember, will all be filled with uh, marine foam. All those are out holes in each one of those sections to pour in. Same thing with the sides where it goes up on the side. Same thing in the nose um, cavity that I will be building um, from the inside up. That's going to be my kitchen pullout for the refrigerator, but we're far from there at this point. Finish wrapping that canvas around that side of the pontoon, top side of it. That's smoothened out. All that will be below the decking anyhow. But all right, moment of truth. Make sure it floats, make sure it's stable, make sure it doesn't leak any water. My little lawn chair, screwed it down in there. Got my kayak paddle ready to go. We'll test this out out on the river. So I bounce around all over it, walk around it, make sure that it's stable. It's very stable. 
and I'm about 200 pounds, so there's no there's no foam or anything in there yet. It's just what you've seen so far. Leaks absolutely no water inside. My brother wants to try it out. So he's out playing. Stands completely on the far corner of it to make sure it doesn't go over. All right, when the outriggers are on, I think it's gonna be super baller. All right, well, we know it floats. That's a good thing. And this is before I add any of the marine foam in there. So those four inch, eight foot long PVC pipes on either end, as well as the two inch, eight foot long PVC pipes on either end. From the inside, I will be dozering out holes in the top and I will be filling two part uh, marine foam um, expandable foam in that which is made for buoyancy so for every cubic foot is uh, 68.5 pounds of buoyancy so just out of the pontoons uh, that I've created on each side I'll begin a few cubic feet out of each side of that in uh, floatable marine foam as well as under the decking um, I'll get another cubic foot spread out throughout under the decking and then under the nose as well so and I'm about 200 pounds, so it held me that well, stable walking around it, um, without any of the any of the buoyancy added to it yet. So I'm thinking we're going to be pretty good on the weight that it'll carry. Um, now, of course, we still are going to add the outriggers in for stability for the width as it rocks out in water, especially if it gets choppy. Uh, of course, this is meant for. I'm designing this for rivers, lakes, calm lakes. This isn't meant for an ocean or anything like that. But um, it floats so uh join me on part two and i promise you the next uh, videos will be much more entertaining um just getting back into this content creator mode and again thank you for being here i appreciate you i'm sax signing out y'all